Tailwind is just worst of the worst, absolutely bad, a really bad nightmare. Developers should not be using Tailwind. This is exactly the thought that you will get when the first time you will open up the Tailwind documentation or you will try to see or just go through with the documentation of any project that is being built in the Tailwind. This was exactly my thought and why I'm making this video because something, the train is going on around the Tailwind on the Twitter and I thought, hey, everybody's talking about the Tailwind. So I should also share my initial thought and what I really think right now about Tailwind. So let me share it. So yes, this is this was exactly my thought about Tailwind that it's absolutely worst of the worst uh, way of writing the CSS. And at that time when I was introduced to the CSS, it was not this, this much popular. Only a handful of people were there. There, there were a few random tutorials on YouTube about uh, explaining that what Tailwind is and how it could be powerful and all of that. And obviously, I was curious about it. But before that, let me walk you through that I was coming from a background of bootstrap or maybe majorly uh, material CSS and all of that. And when you come from these backgrounds, you are kind of a kind of a go through with that. Hey, if I need a button, I'll just grab the button. If I need a card, I'll grab the card. If I want to make it a little bit look different, I'll just add a tiny bit of custom CSS sprinkled over it. Uh, so this was uh, way from where I was coming up. And the first time when I saw it, uh, let me just show you. So I was watching this one of the project here. And if you look at uh, the deployed link up here and check out the GitHub, so don't want to do that. Uh, check out the GitHub preview. Uh, let me show you. If you look at any component that he has designed, this project is entirely built in uh, Tailwind CSS. You can just look for header, footer, whatever you like. And the first thing that you're going to notice is insane amount of classes. And this looks like all the inline CSS, not just look like this is inline CSS that is up there, but this would be a naive move to consider that this is all inline CSS. Yes, it looks like it, it behaves like it, but this is a API level access that you get to your CSS. All of your CSS will be generated once this whole code will be uh, compiled after this process and it will be ready for the production. And at first it looks like you are relearning the bootstrap. There are already classes that you know about the bootstrap. So why would I spend my time to learn to this one? And this thought will remain to you for one or two day, but from the third day things go really on to a different direction. When I started to learn Bootstrap, uh, majorly because I wanted to teach it into a class, uh, I started to exploring it more and more and more. We wanted to build more components so that we can teach in the class and all of that. And I realized that after third or fourth day, I didn't have to look too much into the documentation. The way how they understand the developers is really nice. It was, for me, the crack point was the developer experience. I automatically came to know about these classes without actually looking into documentation. So it made sense. There was a kind of kind of a sensible flow that if you are if you're putting up these classes, for example, uh, font sans, and after that, a couple of other font made sense to me, like text transparent. So I know there are a couple of text-based classes just glimpsing over through it. I know what other options are available to me. Otherwise, the brackety thing is there, but uh, to indigo, uh, BG gradient to L. So all of these, actually, you don't have to look at again. If you are a developer, this gives you a super, super developer experience. Uh, so yes, I would say that Tailwind is one of the way, kind of a best way of writing your components. At first, it will look like this is not manageable, but trust me, we have seen a big, huge scale of projects as well, and they are nicely manageable with the Tailwind itself. I'm not saying that, hey, leave everything else. Uh, Tailwind uh, is going to rule, nothing like that. I'm pretty sure there is something more that's coming up. Uh, the component libraries are coming up left and right in the Tailwind in case you want to go to the bootstrap part, but writing CSS in this way, I think is a good. And jump around onto this uh, Twitter, trend of Tailwind. I'm on the side of, yes, you should be using more of Tailwind. You should spend more time of it. If you want me, I can make some of the beginner level uh, Tailwind tutorials or some crash course where I can explain you a bit more about how it works, how it behaves. I would love to do that. So since my exams are over now, uh, master's exam, I'm back on the seat on the YouTube. Enjoy sharing the thoughts and teaching some stuff. So let me know in the comments if you want something more of a tutorial, I would love to do it. And uh, share it on the Twitter as well. Let's catch up in the next video.